I think it's a very important thing for one to understand that uh, if you do not create a culture of saving, it's not possible for you to build enough capital to venture into any business. And even if you're in, into that business and the income from that business, let's say, is a million bob a month, you cannot be spending two million bob in luxuries. You must spend the one million to expand your business and not to, to spend it on luxuries. Luxuries should be part of what you spend on your savings that you do not need to put in business. Everybody does indulge in one thing or another. If you see young people, the first thing they want to, to buy is, an, a, is a Blackberry or an iPad an iPhone because everybody lacks some some luxury but it depends the level of indulgency the level you get involved in if you have very pricey girlfriends who want to go to the most expensive uh, dining and uh, who want you to buy them cars or to buy them beautiful watches and clothes it's not possible that you can succeed in business. So you got to choose. Do you become a spender or do you become a generator of wealth? A lot of young people, even when their parents pass it on and leave them a lot of money, they squander it within a very short time. What I like those kind of guys to do is to see that wealth as a base to generate more wealth and not to depend on their parents uh, generated wealth to indulge into luxury spend. I think that way you will not succeed because all that wealth will disappear and you go back to square one. And if you do that, you have no way understanding how to generate wealth. So everybody must understand that you go to generate wealth and not to spend more than your income in your domestic budgetary income you must create a portion for saving and a portion for your own luxury spend and that way you will not be in big debts you should never borrow what you cannot repay there are many people who borrow from their friends and that is the last time their friends will see them. You get nice girls coming saying, please lend me some money. That is the last time you see this particular lady. So the best thing is to give the money and say, I give it to you, it's not a loan. And ask them, how are you spending your own money? So you need to help each other, we need to advise each other. We need to move from poverty, we need to move from dependency, we need to become better savers. The Chinese, the Japanese, the Indians, they all saved and saved and saved money before they, they learned to have appetite to spend. Don't buy a car you cannot afford to fuel buy a car that gives you economic uh, mileage and you are able to generate more revenue so that you can buy a better vehicle that you can afford to fuel and maintain. But please, the first thing, save and own a home. There is nobody worth their salt when they continue to live in their parents' house for donkey years. This is not acceptable and you must start generating your own future and uh, your father's base should be just where you started, but your parents would love to see you succeed better than them. I think what you must always look at and which we look at is, is to look at uh, the vision of the innovation. 
you then look at the potential. And then the third thing, you look at how transparent the person you are dealing with is. How organized. Is it a kind of a guy you feel comfortable to work with? Because somebody may have a very good idea, but you look at him, you, ah, this guy, half the time he's in the bar drinking alcohol. Or this guy is not telling me everything he needs to disclose to me. You just look at somebody who is passionate, with commitment to what they want to do, and a person you feel, you have a feeling you can support and work with. Because it's a journey. It's something you bring on board as, as they bring something new on board. And jointly, that's what makes the impact. It's not just the money. Money is just one component. The other component is how do you support the vision of that business to achieve great heights. And to me, accounting, uh, discipline, rules of what you do, the next phase of the business, what is the impact for that business in the communities, to the people, can you sell it to the world? Can you sell it to, to governments? Where are the missing links in doing things for governments to become the top end operator, operators? You know, there are many things you look at. And being experienced in business, I tell you in, uh, in half an hour, I tell you this is go or this is no go. And this is what we do. So Chris, you used to work as a salesman at Shell, and then you also work as an administrator from Kenatco. So for a young African, uh, for my young African youth there who's thinking, I really want to be an entrepreneur, but I'm really so scared. I think the most important thing is uh, first to do your job you are hired to do, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like it is your own job. Mm -hmm. If you fail in working for somebody else who mm -hmm. is paying you to do a job, even when you go and do your own job, mm -hmm. you will fail. Yes. Because you are not serious, mm. you don't apply yourself, mm -hmm. you don't understand why you should devote yourself and mm -hmm. your time. Yeah. A lot of people all the time, they like to disappear from your office mm -hmm. and they think they are cheating the, the employer. Yes. They really are not cheating the employer. Mm. They are cheating themselves. Wow, good point. They think they are smart, so, you know, you have people who come to mm -hmm. the office, mm -hmm put a jacket on top of the chair mm -hmm. and then you disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, you build a character of mm -hmm. dishonesty if wow. you do that. Mm -hmm. And that goes with you yes. wherever you go, mm -hmm. in your own business as well. Mm -hmm. You take shortcuts mm -hmm. because uh, the, the best way to do things mm -hmm. is too long, is, uh, too hard. Mm -hmm. There is nothing easy in exactly. life. Mm. Yeah, if you're looking for easy, easy money, yes. Well, I don't know. Mm. Uh, you, you, you know, I don't want to tell you which trade. Yes. But you know the obvious trade yeah. where you just make money from mm. doing nothing. Mm. Uh, people become thieves as yeah. well mm -hmm. because. They can't imagine working hard for the money they want to make. Mm. And therefore, you know, youth need to keep on exchanging ideas. I they see. need to support each other. Yes. And the people need to read mm. all the time. Mm. Uh, in this place, we write some articles yes. and, uh, to help the youth mm. all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope they, they, they gain something yeah. out of it. We've read so many of your articles and, online. Yeah. I, I, and I know there are few you people write mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. and say how much our writings have helped them, yes. uh, which is something very good, yes. you know. Yeah. It, uh, I, I, I feel so <laughs> satisfied. Yes, me too. We I, like I to, get motivation. We like to keep <laughs> doing it. Mm. Uh, and, and I do hope that uh, many more people can do that. Mm -hmm. and many mm -hmm. people can sacrifice themselves. Yes. 
I have a very dedicated team which yes. uh, they are younger, they, mm. they sit with me and mm. they know the problems the mm. youth have, everyday problems. Mm. So we, we partner and we do what we yes. can. Yes. You know, mm. if many more people did their little bit, mm. I think the country would benefit a lot. Yeah. And the youth of Kenya would benefit. Mm. <coughs> I saw at Pass Out Parade mm. and uh, NYS the mm -hmm. other day. Mm -hmm. I was told there were young ladies there and young boys who two years ago didn't even know how to walk, didn't know where they were. And to see them there walking with confidence, smart, I tell you, I told the president, every youth must go through NYS. Yeah. It is an incredible organization. Mm building character, mm -hmm. building uh, people's patriotism mm -hmm. and helping them to plan to think what they want to do in their future. Yeah. I think anybody who didn't go through NYS, they missed a lot. Mm. They missed everything. Mm. So I would urge any youth and a young person to yeah. think that that youth program yeah. It's not a waste of time. Mm. It's a very, very important mm. one. Yeah. yeah. I really learned a lot, and I can see <coughs> for you, you really like emphasizing on the skills that will help you be an entrepreneur. Make your first million. You have to have an idea. You have to know what you want to do. Very important. Yeah. And once you know what you want to do, you must work the project and realize that if you do X, you'll make 2Y. That's very important to calculate, to work business plan so that whatever you're going into is not going to be a loss-making project. And I believe that people first must believe in themselves. Once you believe in yourself, you create confidence in yourself. Then you have to understand yourself, your capability and what you can do and what is the need out there that you think you can play a role. What, are the, what was the audience's reaction when you started? At first, my own staff thought I had gone cuckoo. <laughs> I was bazak. And um, I told them from today, my name is chairman, not chairman. My name is DJ CK. I just took my name's initials. And then I asked them, I said, who would like me in their show? And they looked at each other. They truly believed I had gone mad. And um, the first breakfast show said, no, not in our show. You wouldn't want to wake up so early. And uh, our audience, I think, wouldn't accommodate you. Um, the afternoon show, the same thing. And uh, luckily enough, one of the young lady who was doing the mid-morning show, I think she sympathized with me. And she said, Chairman, why don't you come to my show? That you've learned in life? No, at first I was very nervous that I would not be accepted on air. But in three months, everybody wanted to listen to me. Everybody sent messages. We want to hear you. Can you speak to us? Because normally a DJ does not speak on, on air. They choose that's the music. That's probably why they, they said they to choose, you take this, this, this show. That's, that's why I chose <laughs> that, because it was not possible I could be on air all the time. And um, those young people who do not get mentorship, those young people who do not have parents who care and give them some training at home, they totally can get completely lost. It's important. Yeah. A mentor is, is crucial. If you have one, yeah. you may not have a mentor available, but yeah. uh, you know yourself. You have the idea, yes. Yeah. We need to encourage young people to become job creators, not for anybody to give them jobs. What we need is opportunities for them to become employers, for them to expand their experience, for them to utilize their knowledge, and for them to become employers, actually. With a small company I started some time back, which uses biometric technology to identify individuals. 
So like DNA testing? I, no. By use of your finger, mm -hmm. I identify people who have a medical policy and I connect the hospitals, the insurance companies, and the client themselves. And that business I find is so useful and uh, it's not the cheapest thing you can do. But because so many people don't have medical schemes, they use a photo card given to one member as a family or as friends, as relatives to go to access medical benefits. And uh, it becomes very expensive for the employer. So what I figured out is that they needed something to help them manage that. And uh, luckily enough, you have this is going strong. Mm. I'm in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, Southern Sudan, Zambia, and uh, I'm on my way to Nigeria and South Africa. I come from very humble, very poor background. I was an orphan. I had nobody to take me to school. I, I, my parents passed off. And really, it is good Samaritans who came to my rescue, took me to school. And of course, I had to care for my young siblings. How many, how many siblings uh, were there? Care? There were three of them. And I had to find money to pay for their school fees because I didn't feel that uh, going to school alone on my own was good enough. I had to bring the rest of my family up. And uh, one of my brother is also now a professor. He teaches at uh, a university in Kenya, USIU. Mm -hmm. If I didn't go through these challenges, maybe I would not be who I am today. It is the challenges in life that made me who I am because I believed that I come from poverty and I must move on. Staying in poverty was no option. And from the time I was in school itself, I worked very hard in school. I didn't waste my time. And you can't believe Julie, I went, I spent three years at Harvard studying business. And today I'm a board member of Harvard Business School. I sit in a board that uh, advises the president of Harvard on global strategy. I'm the only black man in that group of, of, of people who advise, who have reached that honor to advise the president. So I feel anybody can do, can achieve anything. You can achieve your goals if you are determined. It's a, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's a mindset and also when it is very tough, the tough get going. Uh, the tough get going and the rest are left behind. Just yes. Mentoring young people is crucial. I have over 80,000 young people on my Twitter following me on a daily basis. And I try to mentor them and I tell them I'm nobody special. I've reached where I am because of being determined and doing things on my own. Made it. Don't look at politics. Don't look for shortcuts. And there is nothing like being transparent with what you do. You've got to build your credibility. You've got to build your own name. And you need to be able to play your role and not look for easy way out. There are no options. They are only life for those who work very hard and prepared to take their time and work hard. Don't themselves. One has to believe also that uh, there are no easy options. One has to be ready to take a long-term view and uh, equally one have to understand the area they want to play in. I tell you, it has been my life dream. I've always felt I would like to be my own boss. And that was my guiding principle in life. But I also felt I needed to work for other people first, to gain experience, to be able to have confidence in myself. And uh, it took me a long time to eventually say, I finished my employment career 
And now I become an entrepreneur investor. I was very good in what I was doing for other people. I worked for other people like it's my own business. I made it work. So everywhere I worked. You are still wanting to be someone's slave. And you want a job. Why can't you become a job creator? You spend years training in university. Just become an entrepreneur. Make other people work for you. Make the knowledge you acquire in universities turn it to practical incident so that you are the employer. That uh, coming from poverty, there is no no gate stopping me becoming successful, and that's why when I see President Uhuru struggling with the youth, trying to make their life more useful, I believe they can make it. Mm -hmm. One, you must put a saving for rainy days for doing something better. If you have an expensive girlfriend. <laughs> Tell her goodbye, look for a cheaper one. <laughs> we don't use our talents. We don't think hard enough. We got to work hard. Between a, at a girlfriend, a kid and a, a boyfriend who is a pauper, yes. leave him. <laughs> Go. Look for a better one. <laughs> and don't say there are no opportunities. You create your own opportunity.